What I want to look at here first is how to get your basic settings in place uh, so that you can start building your course. And you do that by going to the settings button on your left hand icon over here, your left hand uh, navigation bar. And you can see that I have a bunch of course details listed here. I'll get rid of this little uh, window here. Uh, I can choose a course image. I can uh, change my course code. This is eLearning 2020. Well, I'm just going to change this to Demo 2020. You can give that whatever code you want. Uh, you can change your time zone here. I don't know why this is still saying Mountain Time. Uh, I can change this to any time zone I want. So yeah let's leave it at mountain time because i have some uh, some viewers watching me record this live who are actually in the uh, mountain time zone in canada right now i can configure when i want my course to start and end but i'm going to leave that blank for right now because i don't know a particular start date configure my language all of this uh, stuff here can easily be configured uh, my format, this is going to be an online course. That's just for informational purposes for students. And the course description, this I typically take from the course description from my course outline. I actually have that text here uh, ready to go uh, on a spreadsheet, my course description. So I can copy paste this from here into there. This is what students would see if they were actually uh, looking at the description of this course before enrolling in it. And there are some more options that I can configure here as well, such as whether or not I want to let my students enroll by sharing a secret code with them. I'm going to turn that on later on as part of a later video in this series. I do want to show recent announcements on my course homepage. And you can pick however many announcements you want on there. I think three is fine for now. I can configure any of these other uh, functions that I want. And by default, I want to leave this as only teachers can create, rename, and edit course pages by default. That doesn't mean you can't change this so that students can edit a particular page, but by default, only teachers can. So I've got uh, my basics in here right now. I do like to choose a course image when I'm uh, configuring my basic settings. And this is the image that will show up on the tile. I have uh, some images ready to go for this here right now. Um, I have one right here, this little banner icon. And there we go, it shows up nicely in here. So that will show up in the tile on the, on the, the dashboard when I'm looking at the course. I'm gonna update these course details before I do any other settings changes. There are a few other things that I like to, uh, to tweak on here before I start building my course. One of these is the navigation. I don't typically use all of these options that are available over here on the left-hand navigation bar right now. So I'm gonna turn off the ones that I don't use. I don't typically use this, so I'll drag it down here. I don't typically use that. I can always re-enable these by moving them back up there later on, but I'm just going to get rid of the ones that I don't normally use because I build them in, in other ways. Um, I don't normally enable the files area for my students or the pages area. They get to everything through modules. I do like to have modules, people, grades, discussions, assignments, and announcements, and you can move this into any order that you want. I typically put my modules right after home and announcements uh, then i put discussions uh, assignments grade and people and i'll hit save so these are the ones that students are going to see on the left hand bar over here you can see now there's a little more of these icons that show that these pages are not visible uh, so those are the ones that students will or will not see. Announcements is selected, but it's not visible right now because I don't have any announcements. Same with the modules. Um, once I add some content there, those are going to show up as available for my students. Now, another thing that I like to enable on here is some of the apps that are built in. These are third-party apps, external apps, and there's a few of these that I use all the time. Um, they're, they're great to have enabled. 
YouTube is one of those. I use YouTube extensively in my online courses. So I'm just going to add that app. Uh, I'm not going to add a channel or anything like that right now. I'm just going to enable the app. And I think that should do it for us for right now for configuring the basics. You can always come back here later on if you find that there's another third party app that you would like to enable. But I think that that should be the basics for getting my settings in place. Uh, in some later videos, we're going to look at how to set up your pages, how to configure your course homepage, how to work with assignments, and how to do all kinds of that fun stuff that you want to do when you actually start building your course.